you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the game where you'll be rewarded for knowing the obscure rather than the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, um, our names are Sophia and Petra and we are from Surrey. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Nisha, this is my sister Mariam and we're from Sheffield. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Harry, it's my girlfriend Lizzie and we're from London. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Mike, this is my fiancé, Steph, and we're from Worsley in Greater Manchester. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, welcome to Point, it's lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Give me a clever bloke who's 12 foot tall. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. How are you? Um, yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Even those train toilets, they have things saying, here's looking at you. Really? Like, on the bottom of the train toilet, it's supposed to be one of those kind of... Oh, with such a friendly organisation. Oh, say, here's stop looking at you. It. Are you just saying, I'm in a train toilet? Stop it. <laughs> Honestly, I'd rather you weren't looking at me. Yeah, good point. You know? But it's weird. It's like yeah. the one where the toilet thanks you after flushing it. Stop it. And you think, exactly. I don't want to think about the toilet being sentient. Yeah. Re I mean, oh, really... that's the last device in the world uh, I want to be saying. You know what? I really do. Because oh. I, I, honestly, if it could talk, it wouldn't be saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's my view. Um, now then, uh, Dan and Dave, by the way, won the jackpot last time. Clever father son team. So that means today's jackpot starts off pristine, back at £1,000. Right. If everyone's ready, let's play pointless. <laughs> Remember, at all times, we will eliminate... No, we won't eliminate. They will be eliminated. Uh, that, all of that no, it still sounds horrible. Remember, at all times, at the end of each round, it will be the pair with the highest score that gets eliminated. <laughs> Again, no, that sounds wrong as well. <laughs> it sound, well you know what I mean. You're, they'll be leaving the show. That's all I'm saying. So uh, keep your scores low and no one need be eliminated. You there might we as well, like, press that little thing on your... Kill them. Kill them. <laughs> I know. Anyway, best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... Science. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... Insects, Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you uh, seven descriptions of insects on each board. We'll also show you one example of each of those insects. We will show you the initial of the insect and the number of letters in the insect's name. I mean... I mean we might as well just give you the answer. Might as well give you the answer, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pick that. the answer you want. OK, uh, let's reveal all of those things on the first board. First board of seven. Lightning bug, which glows to attract mates. Blue ghost. F. Seven. Hardy creature, which can eat paper and clothing. Hissing. C. Nine. Small beetle, commonly red with black spots. Harlequin. L. Eight. Swimmer, that feeds from plants and algae. Lesser. WB. Five. Seven. Produces rhythmical noise and feeds on plant sap. Black prince. C. Six. Develops from a caterpillar and has colourful wings. Red admiral. B, nine. Migrates in swarms and devours crops. Rocky Mountain, L, six. Sophia, welcome to the show. Lovely to have Hello. you with us. Um, tell us all about yourself. Um, so I graduated in the summer from university and I'm currently working as a full-time tennis coach. Well, that's fun. Do you, do you work in an indoor tennis centre? <laughs> no, unfortunately, it's um, outdoors all outdoor. year round. Outdoor. Yeah, at least you're doing something to keep you warm anyway. <laughs> um, Sophia, what are you going to go for? Well, insects aren't exactly my strong point, um, but I'm going to go for the second one down and say caterpillar. OK, caterpillar for hissing, hardy creature which can eat paper and clothing. Caterpillar, let us see if caterpillar is right. No, not a caterpillar. That scores you 100 points. Sorry. Sorry, Let's yeah, this, uh, this, it's 11 letters, caterpillar. And this, is, uh, this is nine, I'm afraid. Ah. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Now, then, Nishat, welcome back. Hi. For your last appearance on Pointless. Yeah. May it go well. Hopefully. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed. Tell us more about yourself, Nishat. Well, I do a bit of embroidery, embroider a lot of my own clothes. Do you? Yeah. What's been the most uh, ambitious embroidery you've done? I did a jean jacket and I did this huge flower at the back. Wow. Does it yeah. look beautiful? Well, I'd say so. <laughs> you can ask my sister. <laughs> Yeah, I will. Good. Do you know what? I will. <laughs> I'll ask her when, when the moment comes. Um, Nishat, what are you going to go for on our board here? Um, I think I'll go for the bottom one. 
and say locust. OK, locust for the bottom one. Let's see how many of our 100 people said locust. Absolutely, locust is right. 39. Poor Rocky Mountain locust is extinct. They don't know why, but used to destroy crops, fence posts, laundry, everything uh, in, the, in the States. They once had a swarm of them that was 1,800 miles long. I mean, where have they gone? That's a lot of locusts. That's I a know, lot of locusts. Right? Maybe they're hiding somewhere. And someone's lost. Yeah. Uh, Lizzie, welcome to Pointless. Hi. <laughs> Lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. So I actually used to be a science teacher. So when it said science, I got a bit excited, but I actually oh, specialise no. in did physics. You, did you deflate as soon as... A little as... bit oh, when I saw I'm it in so science, sorry. yeah. Um, oh. But now I'm actually training, well, I want to be a therapist. So I'm studying psychology online. I see. So how long is the course going to be online? So first you have to do a master's, which takes about a year, but right. then it's, it can be up to five years. So it's like wow. completely retraining. Wow, well, that's exciting. <laughs> a bit of a change yeah. of direction. Anyway, yeah. um, good luck with that. Lizzie, what are you going to go for on our board? So I'm going to go for the Black Prince, and I think it's a cicada. A cicada, the Black Prince. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it, if it is. And that goes to eight. <laughs> Very well done indeed. Very well played, so lovely answer. Yeah, uh, one of the loudest insects, the cicada. And they have uh, some interesting names. Black Prince is, uh, is not the half of it. There's a, there's a double drummer. Uh, there's a razor grinder, a cherry nose. Whoa. And a flowery baker. <gasps> wow, were Flower. they drunk when they named all these things? I mean, that's quite something, isn't that's it? Quite flowery something. baker. Flowery baker. So, yeah. Double drummer, like Adam and the Ants. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Brilliant. Yeah. Insects. Yeah. yeah. Topical. Very good. Uh, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> uh, Steph. Hello. Welcome back. It's also your third and final attempt at uh, the Pointless Final. Tell us more about yourself, Steph. So before coming a mother, I used to work on cruise ships. Oh, did you? What were you doing? Um, I was in the spa and travelled around Australia oh, and also lovely. the Caribbean. What's the longest cruise you were on? Um, I was on 14 days one, but you're on there for nine months. Did you love it? Loved it, yeah. Oh, it was an amazing experience. I bet. Um, and now, Steph, this board is all yours. Do you feel like dazzling us with your insect knowledge? So, the first one, I think, is Firefly. Um, do, do, do. I'm going to keep it safe, though, and I'm going to go with the third one down, and Ladybird. There we are, Ladybird. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Ladybird. Ladybird is right. 59 for Ladybird, not bad. Yeah, and the harlequins are orange ladybirds, which uh, they only came to the UK. They're an invasive species, came oh. here in 2004. They reckon they blew over on the strong wind. Their itinerary is going to be completely blown out. Well, literally blown out by that. Yeah, exactly. They're like, yeah. oh, where are we? England. Hey, Blackburn. This is fun. That's... Oh. <laughs> I'm expecting it to be Algeria, but no. So if you see an orange ladybird, they're in it. It's a, it's a newcomer. Um, now, let's fill in the rest of these, shall we? Firefly, you're quite right about. Would have been a better answer as well. Would have scored you 40. Now, the second one is not Caterpillar. It's a hot, oh, cockroach, a cockroach, hissing cockroach. Yeah, hissing cockroach. Oh, do they actually hiss? Surely yes, not. they do. <gasps> and they make a hissing noise. Do they? Yeah. Oh, I don't like the sound of that at all. It's not good. Literally. Yeah, exactly. 16 points for a hissing mm. cockroach. The swimmer? It's a, it's a water boatman. Yeah, water boatman. Lovely. Absolutely. It's yeah. a low scorer as well, actually. You would have scored seven points. Uh, and the, there's a caterpillar and a red admiral. Butterfly. Butterfly. And that would have scored 71, but you score it up there. So, uh, Water Boatman, best answer on the board. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. What better opportunity could we look for to check up on our scores? Eight was the best score of the past. Very well done indeed, Lizzie. Lizzie and Harry looking pretty strong on the back of that. Then 39 is where we find Nishat and Mariam. Then up to 59, which is where we find Steph and Mike. And then up to 100, I'm afraid, Sophia and Petra. Petra, good luck. We're going to come back down the line now. Well, second players, please step up to the podium. OK, let's put seven more names of insects up on the board, and here they are. I said seven names, seven descriptions, I think is what I meant. Aquatic with transparent wings, like the damselfly. Norfolk hawker, D, nine. Drones, workers and queen live as a colony in hives. Red dwarf, H, eight. Louse, which sucks plant juices and secretes a sticky honeydew. Woolly beech, A, five. Large wasp, which often nests in hollow trees. Bald-faced, H. Six, nocturnally active, preferring dark shelter during daylight. Maritime, E, six. Commonly green and known to jump one metre. Meadow, G, 11. Large brown scarab, 
which often appears in adult form in May, northern C, 10. There we go. Now, Mike. Hello. Welcome back. Um, tell us something else about yourself, Mike. Um, yeah, so I'm a runner. Uh, so I run three, four times a week. Um, I'm not in training now, but I'm potentially looking to sign up for the London Marathon again at the end of the year. Very good. Very good. When you say three or four times a week, what sort of length, what kind of runs um, do you go on? What, what anything these? between sort of five miles and a half a marathon, yeah, usually, yeah. I see. So that's yeah. quite a major. That's a major run. Yeah. That's a, that's oh, yeah. an awful decent, lot of miles. Decent size, yeah. Ah, yeah. I've done the, mar done the London Marathon three three times before. Wow, very um, well done. Not for a few years, so quite fancy for this okay. year. Okay. Good stuff. Well, good luck with that, Mike. Um, now, if you can score forty or less, you're straight through to the next round. I probably know only two. I'll probably go for the large wasp and the bald faced hornet. Hornet. Let's see, Hornet, here is your red line. Can we get below that with Hornet? Hornet is right. Not bad. 47, I think you've done enough. That takes your total up to 106. Very well played. Poor Hornets have to worry about their face going bald as much as anything oh, else. I know. Blimey. Oh. Hornet pattern baldness is a... Oh, terrible. They haven't terrible got enough worry. to worry about. I know. Suddenly that. I know. Uh, there we go. Now, Harry, welcome to Point. It's good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I work in finance recruitment in London, uh, but originally from Staffordshire. Uh, so now living in Notting Hill, so gone up in the world a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Will you say that? Yeah. Lovely Staffordshire. <laughs> no, it is great. Um, now, what, what do you do for fun, Harry, when you're not, when you're um, not in recruitment? So I used to play a lot of rugby back in the day, but um, now I mainly eat. Um, I mainly eat. Yeah, and then try and run to, yes, to run enough. it off. But to... more, more eating than running at the moment. OK, so. but you're not in the sort of Mike League of, of running. You're not, <laughs> no, uh, no, no, not no. three or four marathons no. a day. No. Um, <laughs> OK, good. Um, Harry, look at that. You were set up so well by Lizzie yeah. that 97 or less gets you through to the next round. What are you going to go for? I think I'm pretty lucky here to have a, a girlfriend who obviously loves insects so much because um, I'm struggling with this one. So I'm just going to have to go for a bit of a cop-out and say grasshopper. OK, you're going to go grasshopper for commonly green, known to jump one metre. Grasshopper. Here's your red line, nice and high. I think you can probably get below that, even with grasshopper. Let's find out. Well done. Through you go. That goes down to 54, takes your total up to 62. Uh, well done. Yeah, they, they hop in grass. <laughs> and the meadow grasshopper... I suppose that's where they get the name from. No, it's oh, no. a coincidence. They shop at Gra. It is their, yeah, exactly, they shop at Gras. No, their uh, uh, grandfather's surname was Grasshopper. Oh, I see, simple yeah, as that. Isn't that but funny? Absolutely nothing, nothing to do with hopping in grass. No, one of those weird coincidences. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Mariam. Hello. Mariam, welcome back. Tell us one last thing about yourself. <laughs> um, well, I love baking in my spare time. So I make cakes, scones, brownies, but I'm very into decorative cupcake making right now. Which bit so. do you prefer? Be honest. Is it the, 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 the baking bit or the... The, the decorating. The, the bag? Yeah, I like testing out the different piping techniques. That's it. And that's the thing that always gets the wow, isn't it? Yeah. When, you, when you carry a cake in, go... <laughs> <gasps> yeah. I mean, no one even knows what it's going to taste like. But if it, if it looks great, then <laughs> that's looks what I remember. Fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely fine. Uh, now, Mariam, you are on 39. 66 or less gets you through. What are you going to mm. go for? Uh, I think I'm going to have to go for number two because I... I don't know any other on the board, which I think is honeybee. Honeybee, says Mariam. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree. There's your red line. Oh, yeah. That scores you 24, takes your total up to 63. And Mariam, just before I go to Richard, um, what is uh, Nishat's embroidery really like? Um... <laughs> It's good. It's really good. She it's did good. some for me as well. It's good. Really good. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> I'm relieved. Well done. Thank you, Michelle. Good. I, I did trust you, obviously. I just you know, like to verify these yeah, things. It's some for you, but you're not wearing it. So <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Oh. Uh, yeah, low score that, but I think people, honeybee B is the, yeah, yeah. well worked out. Yeah. No, I think H through me. I'll be quite, I'll be perfectly oh, plain it? about that. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it. I was thrown. Even you. Thrown by H. I know. You and me. Oh, my dear. Even, yeah. I never thought I'd see the day. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Even through him. Oh, no, this fella. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Petra, welcome to Pointers. Lovely to have you here. Uh, tell us all about yourself. Um, I'm retired. I like horse riding. Um, so that includes when it's raining or if it's sunny or whatever. You like it so much, you'll go out in all weathers. We do. This is very good indeed. And what did you do before you retired? Worked in a bank. Do you miss the bank? 
Not a bit. No, okay. Not now, at all. we're putting a little bit of an onus on you here. You have to score five or less. I knew some of the others, but I, the only one I know that's left um, is going to be Dragonfly. I just don't know any of the others. Okay, you're going to go for Dragonfly for the top one. Dragonfly. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. There is your red line, quite low. Dragonfly is right. 34, I'm afraid, for Dragonfly. It takes your total up to 134. Yeah, um, unlucky. There's a couple of answers up there that um, would have... Well, one would have seen you into a tie. There's another one would have seen you through. A would not have won it for you. Do you know A? Aphid. Aphid, absolutely. Would have scored you nine points. We'd be in a tie if you'd got the um, nocturnally active insect. I'm trying to think of it. Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Because we've all heard of it, but from that clue, it's very hard to get. It's earwig. Oh. Six points for that. Very well done if you got that. And do you know this bottom one? Again, I'm, I'm struggling with this one. OK, it is uh, for two points. It's a cockchafer. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't know what you laugh at. What is oh. that? <laughs> Someone that finds insects funny. Uh, oh. honest, <laughs> there are two types of cockchafer yeah, uh, in the UK. There's the northern cockchafer, yeah. as you see, and there's the common cockchafer. And funny enough, northern cockchafer and common cockchafer are also my nicknames for you and Bradley Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So, at the end of our first round, we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. I'm so sorry, Petra and Sophia. No sooner have we said hello and welcome to you than we're showing you the door, but only temporarily. You'll be back next time. We we'll look Thank forward to that very you. much Thank indeed. You. Thank you so much, Petra and Sophia. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. There we are. Well done, everybody. You crawled appropriately enough through the insect round. Some of you actually flew. Um, Lizzie. Well done. You flew, <laughs> most definitely, our lowest individual scorer. In fact, Lizzie and Harry, our lowest combined scorers. So well done to you. Uh, best of luck to all three pairs, though. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Television Awards. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... 2020 NTA nominees, Richard. In the moment, we're going to show you six different categories from the NTA Awards. We're looking for any show that was on the shortlist of nominees for the NTA Awards that were in January 2020, please. OK, so we'll put these categories up on the board and you just then have to shout out any programme that you think applies to one of these. Here are the categories. Challenge show, comedy, drama, live magazine show, serial drama, talent show. So, yes, this is the NTA's 2020. There we go. Mariam, you can just say the name of any TV show. OK. And if it's something that was uh, nominated... I've got a few shows coming to mind, but I don't know if they've been nominated. But the only one I can think of right now is Killing Eve. So Killing I'm Eve? Go for that. That's what I'd probably go for. Uh, Killing Eve, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Killing Eve. Killing Eve, absolutely right. And down he goes to six. Excellent start to the round, Marion. Thank you. Very well played. Yeah, nominated but didn't win, but did win the, uh, the BAFTA 2019 for uh, Best Drama. Thank you. Outstanding Drama, I think it is, at the BAFTAs. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Harry, uh, what are you going to go for? Um, I've never actually seen this show, but I've heard it's good. So, I'm going to go for Line of Duty. Line of Duty, says Harry. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 said it. Absolutely right. Line of Duty. Well, six is the only score we have at the moment. Line of Duty takes us down to four. Very well done indeed, Harry. Very nicely played, yeah. Also nominated for drama, also didn't win. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Steph. I've got a few in mind, but I think I'm going to go with... Fleabag. Fleabag, says Steph. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Fleabag. Fleabag is right. Well, six is our high score, four is our low. Not much of a margin. Oh, look at that. Fleabag down to one. Fantastic answer. Everyone's acquitting themselves very well so far. Yeah, that was nominated for Best Comedy 
BBC show. Didn't win. Didn't win. There we go. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, before we come back down the line, shall we have a look at those scores? One, the best score of the pass. Well done to Steph. Steph and Mike looking pretty good. Then up to four. We're behind Harry and Lizzie. Then up to six, Mariam and Nishat. I mean, they're so close. I mean, it seems ridiculous. Sort of cheese pairing, really. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, so looking for any programme that was nominated in any of these categories uh, for the 2020 NTAs. Mike. Hello. What are you going to go for? Yeah, I'm struggling, really, even though we watched so much TV in 2020. <laughs> the only one I can think of that's coming to mind is Afterlife. Afterlife, says Mike. OK, well, you get a red line. Let's see where we end up in relation to that after Afterlife. Afterlife is right. Very well done indeed, Mike. These are all going to be low-scoring answers. You're through. That's a pointless answer as well. Look at that. Very well done indeed. That being a pointless answer adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £1,250, scores you nothing, leaves your total at one. And importantly, gets you into the head-to-head. -head. I mean, well played everybody so far in this round. Terrific. Yes, Ricky Gervais's uh, comedy show on Netflix that was nominated uh, didn't win. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then Lizzie. Uh, so all the answers I was going to give have been given, so I'm struggling to kind of think of one now. But I'm trying to think of something I enjoyed in 2020. So I might say, I will destroy you. I will destroy you, says Lizzie. OK, well, you also get a red line. It's just there, do you see? Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said, I will destroy you. Is it right? Oh, no, bad luck, Lizzie. I'm sorry. <laughs> that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 104. Yeah, sorry, this is the uh, the ceremony from January 2020, so uh, before okay. uh, before I May Destroy You, which is uh, Michaela Cole's BBC series. Thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Nishat, you're on six, 97 or less, gets you through. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of a few, but again, I have the same problem. I don't know if it was for that year. But I'll say this country. This country, says Nishat. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Here is your red line. This country. Oh, no! Oh. Well, I think you put your finger on it right there, Nishat. Yeah. Uh, scores you 100 points. It's wrong. Shouldn't be, but is. Takes your total up to 106. Oh, should have been nominated. Yeah. Love this country. That's, yeah. uh, that's very, very unlucky. As a, but uh, very lucky for podium two, so that's nice. <laughs> but it's a tough category working out what's been nominated for these. A couple of the things like uh, serial drama and talent show are slightly easier to, uh, to guess what's in them. Uh, we'll start with challenge show. Uh, Bake Off would have scored you seven. Love Island and MasterChef would have scored you two each. Pointless answers, The Apprentice and The Circle. Three more pointless answers in comedy. You could have had Derry Girls, The Wonderful Derry Girls, Sex Education and Mrs Brown's Boys. Uh, for drama, two points for Call the Midwife and Peaky Blinders. Pointless answer, Casualty. Uh, live magazine show, This Morning would have scored you 20, that one. Oh, uh, Loose nice. Women would have scored you eight, Good Morning Britain four, and Sunday Brunch was a pointless answer. Well done if you said Sunday Brunch. Serial drama, EastEnders 41, Coronation Street 40, Emmerdale 23, Emmerdale won that one, uh, and Hollyoaks 15. And talent show, Britain's Got Talent would have scored you 37, Strictly would have scored you 12, The Voice UK 8 and Dancing on Ice would have scored you one. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. That brings us to the end of our second round. It means we have to say goodbye to another pair. Oh, Nishat and Mariam, I can't bear it. This is where we say goodbye. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you so much for playing. Nishat and Mariam, lovely thank to have you here. Thank you. Uh, but for our remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Steph and Mike, Harry and Lizzie. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,250. But. Before we go another step towards the head-to-head, -head, let's see if we can't put some more money into that jackpot by finding a couple of pointless answers. Here we go. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many ships of the Royal Navy as they could. Richard. Uh, yep, six names up on the board. Four of them are real Royal Navy uh, ships, according to their website. Two of them we made up. Uh, and two of the real ones are pointless answers. 250 quid for each one you find. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's see if we can truffle out the, uh, the pointless answers here. We've got... Echo, Argyle, Enterprise, Nipper, Trumpeter, Greenall. OK. I, would, that I reckon they always give them, like, fancy names like Argyle. I reckon that's one. I would say Enterprise is probably not. I no, mean, yeah. Star Trek. Sounds a bit too Star Trek. Maybe a, yeah. a fake one, so... Um, yeah. But maybe well, not. it could be any of the other ones. Um, 
What, what Does Nipper for? sound a bit like? I don't know. Maybe they have small ships too. Nipper sounds like it would be something small. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> trumpeter, maybe. Uh, I, what should we say? I'm being told trumpeter, but I don't know. I reckon trumpeter is either wrong or pointless. So I reckon go yeah. for it. Should we go trumpeter? Yeah, let's give it yeah, a go. We'll go yeah. with Trumpeter. Trumpeter. Should we see? HMS Trumpeter, is that a pointless ship in the Royal Navy? It's definitely a ship. Oh, it's a pointless answer. Very, very well done indeed. Good stuff. Harry and Lizzie. I don't know. I reckon, like, I'm trying to think, like, what sounds good with HMS in front of it. HMS <laughs> Echo. I'd Sounds not. a bit weird, but I reckon it's not completely ridiculous. Oh, a girl or a nipper, I would say. Yeah. I just get, think nipper's cute. Nipper's cute. <laughs> yeah, we think nipper's cute, so we'll go with nipper. You're going to go with nipper. Yeah. HMS nipper. Yeah. Let's see if it's right. Let's see, well, let's see if it's a pointless answer. That's the, that's the crucial thing. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just too cute. Too cute, I'm too afraid. Too cute, they couldn't yeah. possibly um, There we it. are. Never mind. Thank you. Richard. <laughs> yeah, um, lucky. Argyle and Enterprise both would have scored you points. So, out of green or an echo, one of those is pointless and one of those is incorrect. What do you reckon? I think echo is, is um, being the sort of phonetic alphabet, I think it would be confusing. So, therefore, they might steer clear of echo. Clever. So, maybe green or. Green or. OK, let's take a look. Is green or the other pointless answer? It is oh, not, no. I'm afraid. HMS Echo is the answer. Simon Greenall, who you know, the lovely yeah. actor, he, yeah. uh, he voices Captain Barnacles in the Octonauts. Of course he does. Yeah. I knew there was a nautical connection there yeah. somewhere. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, well done. You managed to find one pointless answer, which means you've added £250 to the jackpot, taking the total up to £1,500. But who'll be playing for it? Let's find out in the head to head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You're now allowed to confer. Here is your first question, and it's all about politicians in hard hats. Richard. Five pictures now of politicians all wearing hard hats, but who are the politicians, please? Thank you very much. Who are these politicians under the hats? And we've got... A... B... C... D... And E. There we are, five politicians in hard hats. Uh, Steph and Mike, you're our golden couple. You get to go first. Okay. Who's that? Come on, hi. Whichever. I don't know if it's definitely there. Okay, yeah, go with C. Sure. Yeah. We're going to go for C and say Nicola Sturgeon. C, Nicola Sturgeon. Okay, Harry and Lizzie. The board's all yours. Talk us through it. Yeah, okay, so um, I know that A is definitely a US president. And I want to say it's Gerald Ford, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Yes. Um, B is Nelson, Nelson Mandela. Mandela. I think D has got like a Russian thing on his hat, I reckon. So I think in Boris Yeltsin, but again, not 100% sure and not sure on E. Is Maybe e Preeti Patel. House? Oh, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm more sure on Gerald Ford than I am on Boris okay, Yeltsin, I reckon. That, yeah, I hope I'm right here. Yeah. Uh, a, Gerald Ford. OK, Gerald Ford for A. So Steph and Mike have gone for Nicholas Sturgeon for C. Let's see how many of our 100 said Nicholas Sturgeon. Nicholas Sturgeon is absolutely right and takes you down to 73. <laughs> Meanwhile, Harry and Lizzie have gone for Gerald Ford for A. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Gerald Ford. Is it right, though? Unlucky. Not Gerald Ford, I'm afraid, which means <laughs> Steph and Mike. Uh, very well done. After one question, you're up 1-0. Uh, yeah, not Gerald Ford, the guy you followed in, though. You're quite right, so US President Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter yeah. uh, would have say. scored you 42 points. And you were so... Your brain was so tied up with working out who it was. Lizzie gave you a much better answer. Oh, was I right? Uh, Kamala Harris, yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, is he. Now, this tells you that the 100 people were asked before she became Vice President, so she scored six points. It's the last time Kamala Harris is only scoring six points. Yeah. Uh, but well done if you said that. Uh, B, you're quite right, was Nelson Mandela. A big scorer, though, as you might imagine, would have scored you 86. I thought D was Liam Fox. 
Yeah, it looks a bit like Liam Fox, but I haven't spotted it's the uh, the Russian thing. Prime Minister, is he Medvedev? Isn't Medvedev, he? yeah, Medvedev, Dmitry not, Medvedev, absolutely. Not pointless answers. Not ah, Lebedev. there you go. Pointless answers are Dmitry Medvedev. Very well done if you said that at home. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Here comes your second question. Harry and Lizzie, you have to win this one to stay in the game. Yeah. Very best of luck. <laughs> uh, it is all about the number 24. Richard. Yeah, five clues now to facts revolving around the number 24 in one way or another. Thank you very much. Let's reveal the five clues and here they come. We have got... In the nursery rhyme, sing a song of sixpence, four and twenty of this type of bird are baked into a pie. Twenty-four is the maximum number of knight companions in this order of chivalry founded in 1348. Element in the periodic table with atomic number 24 and chemical symbol CR. Eli Roymi was 2019 world champion of this game, played on a board containing 24 narrow triangles or points, and actor who played Jack Bauer in the TV series 24. There we are. So, Harry and Lizzie, it's over to you. OK. And... Yeah. And what's the game on a board? 24 narrow triangles. Is that back? Oh. Um... I think one of those two. OK, uh, I think we're going to go with the element and say it's chromium. Chromium. Yeah. Chromium for the element. Now, Steph and Mike, do you want to talk us through the board? Um, I can try. I think the top one is Blackbird. And then we don't know any of the others, do we? Do we know Jack Bauer? No. Oh, I can picture him as well. I can't remember his name. So, should we play it safe? Yes. Yeah, we'll go for the top one and Blackbird. OK, Blackbird for the top one. So we have Chromium and Blackbird. Harry and Lizzie said Chromium for the chemical element CR. Let's see how many of our 100 got that. Chromium, absolutely right. <laughs> down it goes. Still going down. Down it goes to 20. <laughs> Meanwhile, Steph and Mike have gone for Blackbird from the Singer Song of Sixpence uh, nursery rhyme. Blackbird, how many of our 100 said that? Blackbird is exactly right. Ah, it's a high score, though. 70 for Blackbird, which means Harry and Lizzie, well done. Back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Very well played. Science comes to the rescue uh, once again. A couple of answers up there that would have beaten Chromium. Um, the Knight's Companions Order would have beaten it. And it is... Order of the Garter. Order of the Garter, absolutely. It would have scored 15 points. Um, the game, it's a very distinctive board. Oh, backgammon. Backgammon. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds more complicated than it is, doesn't it, as a question. Would have scored 18. Uh, and the actor who played Jack Bauer? Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland, yeah. He would have scored you 35 points. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, here comes your third question. Best of luck to both pairs. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Our third question is all about... Prague. Richard. Simply five clues uh, to something to do with the city of Prague. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal the five clues and here they come. Nine-time Wimbledon singles champion, born in Prague in 1956. Country of which it is the capital city. Actor who starred as James Bond in the 2006 film Casino Royale, shot primarily in Prague. Playwright and poet born in Prague who became national president in 1989. And Gothic bridge across the river Voltava, featuring 30 mostly Baroque statues. There we are. Um, Steph and Mike, you will go first. What did you think? Um, Country what we played in 2006. Um, the East, Greek. The country's Chechia. Yeah. Um, so, go for the country and say Chechia. Chechia, Chechia, OK. Um, Harry and Lizzie, do you want to talk us through that board? Uh, yeah, we'll give it a crack. Oh, well, we won't give it a crack. <laughs> um, so I think the nine-time Wimbledon singles champion, I want to say Martina Navratilova, but now I'm, like, I'm doubting everything that's coming out of my mouth at the Daniel moment. Daniel Craig, isn't um, it? And Daniel Craig's the third one. Um, don't know the fourth or the fifth. You say Daniel Craig? No. No? No. I'll take the heat if this one's wrong. <laughs> um, I'm fairly confident that the top one is Martina Navratilova. OK, Martina Navratilova. OK. So, we have Chechia, or Czechia, as, as, as we sometimes pronounce it, versus Martina Navratilova. Um, Steph and Mike have gone for Czechia, country of which it is the capital city. Let's find out how many of our 100 said Czechia. Czechia is right, 51. 
Harry and Lizzie have gone out on a limb and have yeah. gone for Martina Navratilova. Let's see if that is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Martina Navratilova. It is right. And you are through to the next round. Very well done, indeed. 17. <laughs> and that means after three questions, you're through to the next round, 2-1. Uh, beautifully played. Uh, and are you agonised about whether to go for that? Well, Daniel Craig would have been the same either way. 45 points for Daniel Craig, so I would have seen you through. But uh, never to over is a lovely answer. Uh, the playwright? Um, Vaclav Havel. Vaclav Havel, absolutely. He's the best answer on the board. Would have scored you five, just slightly better than this answer. Charles Bridge. Six points for Charles Bridge. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Steph and Mike, it is you. This is where we say goodbye to you. Yes. Thank you so much for coming to play. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank I'm sorry you. we're not sending you home with the shiny trophy, but uh, you've, you've covered yourselves in glory nonetheless. Uh, thank you so much, Steph and Mike. <laughs> but for Harry and Lizzie, it is now time for the pointless fun. Congratulations, Harry and Lizzie. You fought <laughs> off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,500. Well, here's what happens. We put four things on the board. You've got to decide which one of those you want to go for. What would be your dream category? Uh, anything maybe kind of pop culture for me. Sport for him. I'd know nothing about sport. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, let's have a look at the board today and see what's there. We've got... Sporting Twins, Oliver Cromwell, Film Composers, Decades of the Turner Prize. What do you think? Um, I mean... Like, I fancy Sporting Twins, but then I think I might... I'm not sure if we're better I, going for something that we can both help each I other mean, with. I mean, I can't I'm help sure. you with any of the others. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I Let's go for Sporting Twins. Do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll go for Sporting Twins. Sporting yeah. Twins it is. Yeah, if one of you's strong, you've got to go for it. You do have to go for it. It's the right tactic. I know yeah. it's scary, though. Um, <laughs> we're looking yes, for any of the following, I'm please. The Bryan brothers, Mike and Bob, have won many, many Grand Slam doubles finals. We're looking for anyone they've beat in any of those finals, just individual players. You don't need to name the pairs that they beat. We are looking for any player in Tracy Neville's World Cup netball semi-finals. Uh, Lineup or Phil Neville's Women's Football World Cup semi final lineup. Both got semi finals in 2019. Any players who started in either of those games, please. Or we are looking for any players who stand between Steve and Mark Waugh in the all time test run standings as of August 2020. So Steve is 11th and Mark is 30th. So any um, cricketer between those two. So players defeated by the Bryan brothers, players interested in Phil Neville's um, starting lineups, uh, and players between Steve and Mark Waugh. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yeah. OK, <laughs> let's yeah. put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, I reckon the middle one is out. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. OK, so um, I, think... I think the top one. I feel like Martina Navratilova might do us again. Um, I don't know. Um, Jamie Murray plays a lot of doubles. Yeah. Andrew Murray's brother. It's, I think, I think so, many, so many tennis players play in the doubles as well. Right. Yeah. I think I, I feel like Jamie Murray and Yelena Yankovic were like a mixed doubles partner, but they wouldn't have played the Brian Bugs, right? No. Because it would be. Because there's two men. Yeah. So yeah, it has okay, to have okay, two male okay. players. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Good shot. So um, players. players between Steve and Mark Waugh. So, like, a good player, but not a great player. Well, no, a great player, but not amazing. Um, <laughs> I think you like a. I think we should find this. Fifty for C. Uh, yeah. Quinton de Kock, maybe. Oh, I'm trying to think of people who like who've been around. Um, okay, let's so... go for fifty for C. Yeah. Um, Ten maybe. seconds left. Yeah. Uh, uh, a Jamie Murray. Okay. And um, I'll think of another one. <laughs> <laughs> and but that no, is your no. time up. Let's have your three answers. What can you give me? Okay, so um, for the tennis one. Uh, we'll go for Jamie Murray. Jamie Murray. Yeah. Uh, cricketers. Just say the two you were talking about. Faf Duplessis. Faf Duplessis. Yeah. And then I'm trying to think of uh, another cricketer. Uh, let's say David Warner. David Warner. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Faf Duplessis. Maybe. Okay, Faf Duplessis yeah. goes last. Yeah. Least likely to be pointless? Jamie Murray. I think Jamie Murray's fairly well known as a doubles, doubles player. Okay. So, so yeah. yeah. Jamie Murray yeah. and then David Warner goes in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Very good. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Jamie Murray, David Warner and Faf Duplessis. 
There we are. Now, if one of these turns out to be pointless and wins that jackpot for you, 1,500 quid, nice thing to be taking back home, what would you like to do with it? Well, I'm actually from Hong Kong originally, and my parents still live there, so I'd quite like to get Harry to meet my parents, I reckon. Oh, would well, that be nice? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very good indeed. Harry, what about you? Um, <laughs> Not that. I mean, you can't, no, really, no. you can't really argue with that. You have to say, yeah. No, it's, yeah. no, I feel like uh, Nick and Feli and I, uh, Lizzie's parents, have had some decent FaceTime chats, so it'd be nice to kind of properly meet them. And um, also, I used to live in Hong Kong as well, so it'd be nice to go back and, and, and see it. Um, so, yeah, we'll, um, I think we'll chuck in holiday. together and go, go for a holiday. Very yeah. nice indeed. OK, good luck. Uh, Jamie Murray is your first answer. In this case, we're looking for players defeated by the Bryan brothers in Grand Slam doubles finals. Uh, let's find out if Jamie Murray is pointless for £1,500. How many people said Jamie Murray? <laughs> Not Jamie Murray. <laughs> let's turn to your next answer, David Warner. We are now looking for cricketers, uh, players between Steve and Mark War in the all-time test run standing. In fact, we have that for the next two answers. Let's see, David Warner, is he pointless under those criteria? No, bad luck, not David Warner. <laughs> Everything is now riding <laughs> on Faf Duplessis. Let's see if he appears between the War Brothers. No, bad luck. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it was a game attempt, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important correct answer, I'm afraid. So, uh, the pointless didn't really get a look in. But, um, yeah. So you don't, you don't get to win the jackpot, but you do get to take home a, a pointless trophy each, so yes. very, very well done for that. Uh, yeah, and it was a valiant effort. You went obscure, which is... That's the way to win this game. So you did exactly the right thing. And, you know, I'll show you some of the names on the list and some of those people might as well have been on it. Yeah. Um, let's start with those uh, doubles players, shall we? Uh, probably the two best-known doubles players on the pointless answers. This Leander Pays and Max uh, Murney are up there. Uh, Nicholas Mahu is uh, probably most famous for being in that uh, super long game with John Isner. Uh, Yevgeny Kafelnikov, who's teamed with Paul Aha, who's is also a pointless answer. And Murney was with Jonas Bjorkman, who was pointless as well. In fact, every single, uh, every single player was pointless on that list. <laughs> there were no scorers at all. Uh, and those people might know Daniel Nestor, Fabrice Santoro, uh, Radek Stepanek. But uh, essentially, anyone the Bryan brothers uh, beat together were pointless answers. Now, those two semi final lineups, loads of big names on this list. Um, we could have had Ellen White, Steph Horton from the, uh, from the football team, Jeeva Mentor or Serena Guthrie from Netball, uh, Carly Telford, a pointless answer, Helen Housby, Jill Scott, Millie Bright, Nikita Paris, Rachel Daly, loads of good pointless answers there. Well done if you said any of those. And the cricketers, be loads of names. You mm, clearly know yeah. your cricket, and there's loads of names you'll know here. Um, David Gower, a pointless answer, Gary Sobers, Kevin Peterson. Uh, point this answer. Viv Richards, uh, A.B. de Villiers, Alex Stewart, Graham Smith, Hashim Amla, Imzaman al Huck, uh, Java Miandad, Matthew Hayden, and Michael Clark, both the Australians uh, yeah. on that list. Uh, Verenda Saywag, you could add Eunice Khan as well, so loads of pointless answers there. Uh, I mean, your answers were just as good, if you know. It's so hard to work out who's between 11th and 13th, yeah. right? So, yeah, um, quite... very, very well tried. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, so you much. very much indeed, Rich. And thanks, Harry and Lizzie. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot today. Sorry. That'll therefore roll over <laughs> onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,500. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>